Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. Today, we're gonna go through a topic that is always very asked. I get asked that a lot. And that is how to make kick and bass sound good together and why do they generally don't sound good together in the first place. And then I'm gonna show you five tips and tricks on how to actually make those two be friends again. Remember to subscribe, remember to hit the bell icon, and let's get into this tutorial. <laughs> okay, if you have ever struggled uh, making kick and bass sound good together, then why is it? Why is that? It's because of a thing called masking. Masking means that when you have a track, one track and a second track, <laughs> and you play them same time, they might have similar frequencies going on and they take space from the same area of a frequency spectrum. Let's demonstrate this. So here we have a bass kick, very boomy kick. And on spectrum, you can see it mostly takes space on the lower boom area. So that is around... 30 hertz all the way to kind of 90 hertz. That's where it, it's located. And I use, uh, by the way, a spectrum analyzer from utilities to see where the frequencies are. If we take a bass that is also very boomy, so let's go and listen to that one. You can see, again, a lot of its frequencies hanging around over here. Okay, so now when we try to play them together, they don't sound that good. They sound muddled. They sound like a mash. Like where is the kick? And also the bass doesn't that sound that defined. They're canceling each other out because we have too much similar frequencies going on. So if you're not absolutely sure what is a frequency spectrum, how does it work? And what are we looking at here? I have a video explaining exactly that part of my free mixing course for beginners. So I'm gonna link down the video down below and you can go and learn more about frequency spectrum. Let's go into our tips and tricks on how to solve this issue. Tip number one, choose samples that occupate different areas of the frequencies. Here in front of me, I have some samples. So example, we have a very low kick that occupates mostly the sub frequencies. Then we have a tiny little bit higher and there's a little bit high end crackling noise as well. And then we go higher. There we go. So now it's more around the left and right side of the 100 hertz. Then we have kick number four that has both. We have very high end click, which is almost like a hi-hat sound, together with a kick, which is around 100. So you can see the high end here, plus actually the mid goes quite high as well. And then we have a little bit of boom, and then we have frequencies going around 100. Okay, so the same thing with bass. So we have a very subby synth bass. We have frequencies in a boom area and around 100, plus even the harmonics going around here in the mid area are quite high up. We have also a synth bass line that is even higher. Look at these harmonics in the mid area here. It's also sub area a little bit, but mostly it's in the mid. Okay, so when we are choosing samples, should we choose ones that are in, working in the same area? So example, let's put these two together. No. Doesn't work that well. How about this uh, subby bass with the little bit higher uh, boom kick? Still not the perfect match because there's a lot of subby sounds going in both. How about a little bit higher kick? Already much better. How about a little bit higher kick? 
already a lot more separation between the sounds. Choose your samples wisely that also maybe are in a different frequency ranges already so that in the mixing you have less work to do. Number two, when masking, EQ. EQ, EQ, EQ. Mostly cut and add resonance. So let's go with this sub bass and the sub boom kick. And let's see how much we can do with EQ. So I'm just gonna go and start with uh, the bass actually, and I'm gonna add an EQ. So I'm gonna go with the EQ8. But almost any EQ really would work for this. Point for us is to cut unwanted or unneeded frequencies that are the ones that are colliding with the other instrument. We have a lot of unneeded energy going in the sub frequencies. So we can start by high pass filter, which we're going to go to the filter number one, add a high pass filter and cut away from the low energy. So one really good way of doing this is move the uh, filter doo -doo 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 -doo, until you can hear a massive difference between the sound. And then you're just going to bring it a notch back. So there's, you, we are cutting quite away a lot now. You can still see there's quite a lot of energy on there, on the bottom end. Maybe we can cut it a little bit even further away. So we could add a little peak of resonance. And what that means is that we're exaggerating a sound that we would like to have more. So we like to have more this area. So if the sub kick is in the sub area on uh, 30 to 100, then maybe the bass will occupy more over 100 to maybe 400, 300. So example around there. So it's quite high up now. So what I'm going to do is bring it lower, narrow down the cue. I remember that this can bring in uh, a little bit volume into the signal. So I'm going to take uh, make sure that you gain stage. So you also take down the gain a little bit. There we go. And now we're going to go to the kick sub add an EQ8 and we're going to do the same with opposite. So we want to exaggerate the boom and take away from the mid. This one, to be honest, we could just put a low pass filter. like this and then we can just add maybe the number two we can just take and add some resonance maybe a little bit more around 190 somewhere there number three three i said two but three same time three <laughs> number three when masking add harmonics using wave shaping and distortion oh so example, this kick that we just EQ'd, it still doesn't sound that exciting. We just get this kind of boom, boom. We are creating extra harmonics so that we, when we EQ, we have more things to play around with. So we can create more that example, the bass is pushed even further to the um, mid low area of the frequency range and the kick uh, have a more prominent dominance of the low boom area. Go to drive and color and almost any of these devices here can create that. So for drums, I like using drum bus to create color because it has the drive effect and it sounds really good. C cool and good together is cool. Cooled. I'm inventing so many words today. <laughs> So we have dry, we have crunch and damp. So we're going to be working on those. So first thing I need to do is go to the trim area and trim this a little bit. So this just gives a little bit space in the dynamics for it to work so that we can actually create a lot more interesting uh, drive sound. So drive add uh, color into it. So basically new harmonics. So let's just look at it before, before drum bus. Okay, and now let's add drum bus, add drive and crunch and maybe medium. Ooh, look at those harmonics. So without, 
with. Appearing there. We can also use the heart. Oh. Because we have the EQ before this, we're only adding saturation to these frequencies. So we are preventing even more masking and we are bringing even more distance between those two sounds. So then we can go to the bass and from here, I'm gonna add a saturator. So saturator is one of my favorites. I actually have a video both about drum bus as well as saturator on how to use them. So uh, go to the link down below to check those out. So first we're gonna go output down add some drive and we're going to actually need to go to the bass to actually hear it. Clever. And from here, I usually for bass, I love cyanide fold. It just always works really nicely. Look how high, look at those, all those harmonics on the top there. Hi. I don't know what that laugh was. Why? If you think it's too high, you can always use this filter to take it down a little bit. Look at that. Fantastic. So just to compare, this is without EQ and color. And this is now with the added EQ and color. So much better. The bass is quite changed a little bit on its uh, sound, but we can of course adjust it with the filters and all that as well. Number four. Number four. Layering. Layering is one of the best things. So let's say we have this boom here and it's bit too low, too, like it doesn't have an impact and it doesn't separate really well from the bass. So what we can do is also maybe take a higher sample and play them same time. It has so much impact already by just putting those two basses same time because this one has higher harmonics than this, then together they are adding up. It's a bit like when we added those harmonics using a saturator, but um, to, we can also just do it manually by adding different kick sounds together. So example, we can layer the bass, uh, we can duplicate it, and then we can example pitch shift it octave higher if we want to. Then of course, what we can do is group these two tracks. So I highlighted them both and then command or control G. And then now the group track, I can do the same. I can go and add a saturator there, or I can add mm, uh, mm, uh, EQ there. So then I could group track these ones too. So we have the kick group track and a uh, bass group track. We added those layers and now we're going to celebra uh, celebrate, <laughs> separate them even further by using the same stuff that we just used. Voila, how wonderful is that? Techniques that I use so much all the time. Number five is side chaining. Side chaining, which is one of the most common tools to add space in the frequencies using dynamics. So here we have a bass track and a kick track. Don't know what that was, but I felt like dancing. So basically side chaining means that using either compressor or a gate, we can duck the sound of the bass every time that the kick plays boom boom the sound of the bass goes down so let's just look at compressor first so we can activate it then we open it up from this triangle here we click sidechain from the audio from we select the kick so this one is kick number three okay we also activate the eq and here we actually go to the filter type. So this means that we can only, so the kick is kind of low. So we want to take the low energy from it, the low frequencies. So let's put like everything before 100. Okay, so now we're just gonna compress it like we would. If you want a very strong ducking effect, you go very down with the threshold, you add a lots of ratio, and then you need to have quite fast attack and release.
So you can see the GR, which means gain reduction. So every time the kick is hitting, it reduces the gain so much. So attack and release are really the ones, the two controls that determine a lot. How does the uh, ducking effect work with your compressor? So if you want to hear it even further, if you want a very, very strong ducking effect, then maybe it is gate that you're looking for. We can do the same thing. We can activate gate and then from here, kick three, same thing, EQ lower frequencies now example before one, uh, 200 uh, hertz then threshold can you hear already then attack but the from here the hold is really important and then floor also, gate is a really cool way if you want to just add a little bit of rhythm and groove into it as well. So together. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon and come again because I always post every Sunday. I have more of these kind of videos coming up as well. Also, thank you so much for my Patreon followers who are here. Absolute legends. We have so much fun in the Patreon and also I have started to do monthly masterclasses there as well. I have a new tier where you can come and talk to me and I do masterclasses on several very cool topics that people ask me to teach them. I uh, hope you have a very lovely day. Bye. Bye, 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 bye